Well, hey team, Grant Hagen back here with the Reality Capture Recap. Welcome in. It's Friday, March 15th. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new, uh, welcome in. If you are returning, welcome back. Uh, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Grant, and uh, we do this once a week, uh, just all the topics around Reality Capture, and really just our opportunity to hit on these five things. Uh, we keep these really short around here. I uh, hope that you guys find these uh, very insightful uh, in case you haven't uh, seen these things on the interwebs. Uh, but really, we just go through these five things over here. And so uh, what I wanted to do was start off with the best thing that I saw, always the front favorite here uh, on the beginning here. But really what I want to see, uh, the fact that we haven't talked about this yet, I feel like uh, needs to be brought up. Gaussian splats, what are they? How are they being used? What does this look like? But the cool part out here, uh, I just think these are amazing. Uh, th if you haven't heard about these, uh, it's time to get out under the rock. Uh, these are just transforming, I really think, uh, reality capture in general. And I thought this was a really cool post from Aiden. Uh, really what it was interesting is, is handheld um, really capture devices are really changing the way. We talked a little bit about it last week with the Naviz team. But what's really cool about this, this is the Wixel L2 system. And of course I had to do my own little research about this. Uh, but what's cool is these handheld uh, mobile scanners are truly like changing the way that we uh, are documenting. And if I turn down the volume here, there we go, sorry. Uh, but what's crazy about this is these things really are, I think going to change so much stuff in the reality capture space. Uh, and what's cool about it is they're becoming more and more mainstream, uh, which is just awesome. Well, I think with content and posts like this uh, that are out there, I was like, man, this is amazing and so cool uh, to see what's available to go out there. And so I, I just thought this was truly the best thing that I saw this week. It got a ton of engagement uh, from this team here too. And, and I think the, the idea here is this, I think is really going to change the way that we uh, are going to capture both from the ground uh, and really start to digest uh, how this is really going to be navigated and viewed and all that kind of stuff. So. I just thought that was really interesting. Let's get back to uh, our board here and look at the next one of a give them a follow. Uh, this one is really easy this week. Uh, I don't know why I haven't uh, highlighted this gal in particular, but Alicia uh, over at the Skydio team. This is just really cool. One, uh, she leads their uh, solutions engineering team. And one of the cool parts about it is just the content that she's put out uh, really from a long time past and even here recently that I'll show you here in a second. Uh, it's just awesome. Great content. One of the coolest things is they had a... Uh, webinar this week that really talked about the difference between LIDAR and photogrammetry, obviously on the Skydio uh, platform, and really just what that looked like. And if you haven't followed Alicia out on LinkedIn, would highly encourage you to go check her content out. Just really great stuff. Always informative, always personal, always uh, just engaging in the type of content that uh, I think we all appreciate out in the reality capture field. So uh, just wanted to kind of highlight her. Alicia, thank you so much for all the content that you're putting out there. Uh, and hope you guys can go give her a follow quick. So uh, what I wanted to do next here is bring up the uh, who's crushing it. This is always just a fun one. I love this segment uh, really where we highlight uh, different companies or individuals that are out there that are just doing awesome stuff. And kind of to that tune of the uh, Gaussian splats is uh, Luma AI. Again, I feel like this is another no brainer where I was like, hey, how have we not spotlighted these guys yet? Uh, but just really cool stuff. If you haven't heard about them, they uh, are just exploding in this space. Uh, visualizations and really processing a lot of this information that we are all capturing. And what's really cool about it is I was looking at some of their videos and content as uh, I was thinking about, man, why are these guys crushing it? What's just really cool about it is they're t really taking a lot of what we are doing from uh, kind of capturing this data and putting it in super presentable ways, very easy to share, very engaging. I thought this one was really cool. An example that they had uh, here earlier of uh, I think Alex actually posted this originally. And what was cool about it was just this idea of how do you embed these Luma AIs into uh, other different kind of uh, visualization tools. In this case, it happened to be on a map. But what I thought was really interesting about this was like, man, if you guys haven't gone and followed Luma AI one, I highly encourage you to do that. This video, I think what kind of caught my eye, I think it was about a month ago when it came out here, but they were just, again, all this Apple Vision Pro stuff. We've talked about that on here before too, but really how they're starting to integrate some of that stuff into that piece of hardware. And so I just thought it was super cool. Uh, the stuff that they're doing over there, uh, they are quickly gaining their follower list over there, which you can see uh, over on that left-hand side. But yeah, if you haven't followed them, go give them a follow. They are clearly crushing it in this space uh, and just super cool to see. So definitely encourage you to go check that out. The next one on the horizon, always a favorite one. We talk about uh, either new hardware leaks, new kind of rumor mills, things like that, or just conferences or things that are coming up. Uh, this one, what I thought was really interesting uh, is, is this DJI Avada 2. I personally have the Avada one. I was so excited for this thing to come out. Uh, one, because I love FPV videos. They have totally changed the way that I feel like 
we uh, experience buildings and videography and all this stuff. Uh, but the Avada One was DJI's kind of first step into this space. And it was really exciting because it really was democratizing this FPV experience. And uh, the Avada One came out, uh, gosh, probably about a year ago. And the cool part about it was this really broke in and said, hey, you don't have to go and make these uh, different quadcopters and FPV drones anymore. You can just buy them. And I think what's cool about DJI in this space is that they've obviously continued to see the value of what they're bringing out here. And you may be asked like, okay, well, what does this mean in the reality capture space? I, the Skybrows team, I thought was doing some really cool stuff with this. Uh, again, almost about a month ago when I saw this. Now, let me turn the volume off here if you uh, hear that in the background. But what's cool about this is they were using the Avada to go and do some interior capture. Uh, and then what they were doing was processing this obviously into this 3D model that you see here. But I just thought it was really cool. Like the Avada obviously is more of a consumer product, but in this case, uh, you can do so many other things with it, which is what the Skybrows team was showing off here. But uh, I don't know when this is going to be announced. I too am with you of just like interested and kind of curious to see uh, what this plays out to be and what this eventually will look like. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was really cool. I just came across my feed this week and I was like, that's great. I am excited that they're coming out with another piece of hardware uh, and just thought that was awesome. So uh, really cool to see more work coming on the uh, DJI side of things with the Avada 2. So lastly, let's get to the hot takes portion. Uh, I always like this part one because I'm going to ramp things up a little bit. Uh, I intended these sessions or this section of this uh, to really stir some comments down below. And I guess I haven't been spicy enough or hot taked enough to really drive some of those comments. So that is what I want to do this time. And what I want to talk about was just this idea of accuracy. Uh, this is a very hot topic in reality capture. All of us probably know and different things that uh, we've been a part of here. But what I wanted to kind of camp on here about this and why I kind of the hot take here was this this difference of relative and absolute accuracy. I, the hot take I'm going to say is that, man, I think that relative accuracy is like completely underutilized in reality capture in just the understanding of what it is. Obviously, survey control is incredibly important. It's something that you need to do a lot of comparison to uh, comparisons over time to. Like, like absolute accuracy is incredibly important. That, that is, I would probably lose so many of uh, the thoughts and comments here if I were not to say that was true. But what I think is hard is that I don't think a lot of people have uh, a lot of insights into what relative accuracy is and why that is also a very valuable tool uh, in being able to use reality capture without the need for uh, like survey-based control and what you can do with relative accuracy. That's really the hot take here is like, hey, there are so many things that, uh, if you go out and capture and you are able to go in and really measure off of that, there are some value props in it being relatively accurate. Uh, obviously, there's caveats to that. There's tons of asterisks in that. I got 40 seconds left on this counter here. But the idea behind this here is really what I wanted to kind of elevate as a hot take is that uh, we on the Drone Deploy team put out this uh, kind of complete guide to high accuracy in the drone mapping space, specifically in underneath reality capture. And what was interesting about this is, again, I'll put the link in here and you guys can go check this out of what that would look like. But what I wanted to kind of focus on was just this idea of like, hey, I, I think there's a lot to learn in this space. I think there's a lot of education that kind of still needs to uh, be around in that kind of segment. Uh, and I just hope that more folks kind of see of like, hey, there are tools out there that you can reference that uh, really define what the difference is between relative accuracy and absolute accuracy. I think we can maybe do a little bit better job of explaining which ones that we're talking about here. Uh, and so, yeah, just felt like that was a reasonable hot take to kind of linger on for a couple minutes here uh, towards the end. But uh, we are at time. We've gone through the five topics here. I hope this was, again, encouraging, helpful, fun, uh, engaging. Leave your comments below and really tell us uh, what your thoughts are on either of these topics or things that uh, you guys find interesting. So we will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in and we will talk soon.